you might remember Regency, a powerful free face distortion synthesizer. Well, this is not the only interesting synth by Nax, and as I love supporting indie developers, let's check which seems to be the flagship synthesizer of the products. Similar to other modern synths, it has all the Sony engines in one screen, on a clean and intuitive interface. The quote-unquote analog oscillators are based on four waves, the classic sine, triangle, square and so. Each one has the usual controls for pitch, volume and everything else, and you can also add unison, which has a lot of different modes from massive to chords, even harmonics, subharmonics and microtonals. These other three knobs will affect the waveform by applying some sort of phase modulation to it. Chaos, Drift and Wobble will change the sound and distort it a bit, but without creating a new waveform. Here you can also apply FM by selecting an oscillator or even a sampler as the modulator. And then you got a pulse width modulator that can be applied to any waveform. For the triangle and the sine wave, it's called warp. On the other hand, the sampler is pretty basic, and it comes with a nice selection of sounds. Of course, you can also put your own, and yes, you can drag and drop. And you can change the loop mode to be forward, ping pong, or one shot. You also have unison for the sampler. So, you have eight sound engines you can combine and make them affect each other. Then we have two analog model filters that sound really nice. Especially when distorting. Also you got all of these types of filters, even phasers, comp filtering, formant and rate reducer. As I say, you have two filters, and each oscillator can be sent to one, the other, or a mixture in between. Not only that, filter 1 can be sent to filter 2, but you can still change the routing of each oscillator and sample. Now, what I like a lot about the synthesizer are the modulators. We have classic envelopes, and the way they work is that you have to click assign, and then you can virtually modulate any parameter, even parameters on other modulators. The LFOs are actually M6, as you can edit them any way you want, and make them act like an envelope by disabling the looping mode. To snap to grid, you have to hold shift. Besides all of that, you have four math models that will also present on Regency. This works like a wave shape. Let's use a classic triangle LFO as our source. When we start to change, you will see that's a wave shaper. And you can choose any modulator, even modulators like per note random, noise and whatever you want, as a source to wave shape. Besides that, you can also combine two different sources to get even crazy results. You blend them with this knob right here. This is really advanced and crazy enough, but having four of them makes things even better. Then we have two step sequencer that will apply a modulation up to 16 steps following the shape you see here. You can change the amplitude of each modulation. And you have these 10 different shapes. Then we have the mode matrix, where we can add modulators such as velocity, mod wheel, pressure, and some unique things like per note random. For modulation, finally we have the macros, which are my favorites, because you have also these XY controls. So let's set this up really quickly. So 
So as you see, one of the best things about this synthesizer is the amount of modulation that you have. On the effect side, we have two series of four, giving eight effects in total with the options to be serial or parallel. You can even divide them by filters or by other weird options. You get a nice beat crusher, a distortion with different types, a really lush chorus, a crispy flanger, phaser, a pitch shifter with a really unique engine, a filter and two EQs, and this disperser which will, well, take a listen. Then we have the compressor, a mini chain which will give the pumping effect, and a steering enhancer. And the trans gate. The interesting thing is that it can be set to stereo, which means that we can edit each side independently. Then we have a bunch of delays and a reverb, a simple ping pong delay and a two tap delay. And one of my favorites, the pattern delay. This can also be set to stereo, and the left click will add a tap on the left, and the right on the right. The reverb sounds really lush and nice with different algorithms. And finally you have a sub oscillate. Every parameter you see here can also be modulated. Finally, we have the sequencer and it's really powerful. We have two sequencers. Both are the same, so before I start explaining why we have two sequencers, let's dissect one of them. When we turn it on, we will have a simple arpeggiator. We have the classic arpeggiator controls, and when we increase the length, we can make it so each pressed node will complete a loop, or make it so it still behaves like a normal arpeggiator. Now, we have options for the pitch in semitones, velocity, probability, gate length, and expression, which give us yet another sequencer modulator options. And if we press one key and change the pitch offset, we will have a simple sequence. But we also can press every key as an appreciator, and we will have more complex sequences. We can disable the length match and make every parameter have a different amount of steps. We can add swing. And finally, the usefulness of having two sequencers is that right here you can choose which generator, analog 1 to 4 and sample 1 to 4, will be controlled by which sequencer. That way you can create yet even more complexity to your sound and even polyrhythmic relationships, crazy rhythms and whatever you want. <laughs> What's crazy about this is that, for example, if you set the velocity to control the filter cutoff and make it so sequence 1 has less velocity than sequence 2, the cutoff will be polyphonic and the oscillator that you have selected to be controlled by sequencer 1 is the one that's going to be affected by the filter with a lower cutoff point. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with all of these options we have right here, and the developer is amazing. And of course, if you want to know better how good they are when programming synth, you can check out Regency and others that are free. Altitude is priced at $99, and honestly, I think it's a fair price. I know that some similar synthesizers can be cheaper or even free, but also similar synthesizers are the same price or even expensive. So it's nice to have plugin options in the market that are made by independent developers that offers really high quality.
The only downside for some is that the plugin format is only Clap, and I believe only Bitwig and Reaper can open those kinds of plugins. Still, Clap is getting more popular, so let's be patient. Now, a full disclosure, Nacts sent me a free version of the synthesizer, but the decision of making the video was entirely mine, so they haven't watched it on advance. Tell me in the comments what do you think about the synthesizer, if you love it as I do, and while you're at it, give a like to the video. Thank you for watching, I will see you next time, and bye bye.